first order of business is um, say that it's really cold. Um, also, I guess the next thing, uh, let's assign the exam. So I want four problems. And I want the four problems to Um, encourage you to you know, review important concepts or important ideas or important math. So what do you suggest that we put in there? And I guess if you prefer, we can start with the important ideas. What do you guys think? No idea? Are you guys muted or something? Hey, there's enough people, come on, speak up. Is there a message here? First probability. Good. So um, let me see, I should be able to use my other computer to look at your messages. But I do prefer if you just speak, speak up. Uh, somehow I'm just getting the message from February the 10th. Okay, come on, just tell me guys. Let's not waste a lot of time. For me, um, I liked problem set to question one. Okay. Uh, to refresh everybody's name, though everybody might not have it in front of them. It says, suppose that random walker takes 10 steps to the right and n prime steps to the left. So, the okay. question one is, what does it mean about you, you, Give me a second, give me a second, give me a second so that I can find yeah. it. It's just an idea. That's one that I. I thought was important. Uh huh. So you said problem set two? Problem set two, question one. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's the random walk. Mm -hmm. um, what? So you think the idea was important? What was the idea? Um, well, I, I, th I think it was the, the use of the general general equation as to how I tried to solve it. Mm -hmm. At least. Okay. I'm trying to pull up, to pull up my homework for it. 
I like that problem. Um, I think the we can simplify it a little bit because for that problem, um, I think you needed like some you needed to do quite a bit of algebra you know, with the properties yeah, the properties of the um, of the mean. So that might take you a little too long. I mean, I don't think that is as important, but I agree with you that the idea is. So should we make that one problem number one? It I, is. I think it's a good idea. It if, is. If we can simplify it, like you said, I think it would be a good one. Mm -hmm. What about? Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's let's do this. Uh, it's going to be a random walk. So these are the concepts of probability. And but it is going to be a biased random walk. Okay, so um, the situation in problem problem set two, problem one, it was uh, the general case. So the probability could have been anything. Uh, if you do a random, uh, if you have a, a an unbiased coin, and you toss it, then you, know, you get your 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 Gaussian, which is the the distance that is going to travel after n. Is going to be square root of n. Um, so if it's biased, you're going to go a little further. So I'm going to ask you. Uh, to calculate it, okay? Bias random walk, uh, calculate. Uh, mean uh, and displacement. But it's going to be numerical, okay? Not, not algebraic. Awesome. I like the problem. What other ideas were important? I was thinking we could do um, energy and temperature, like an example from homework three. It was a third question. Homework three, third question. Uh huh. So it is the multiplicity. Okay. So let's let's do that one. Uh, let me write down here. So similar to problem set two problem. One. This one is going to be similar to problem set three, problem uh, three. So uh, entropy, energy, and temperature. Uh, oops, not the color that I wanted. So for that problem, you're given a multiplicity. And you have to get the energy 
So it's a multiplicity as a function of uh, the energy. So you need to know some of the thermodynamic uh, relationships. So I'm gonna give you a different um, function, multiplicity function, but the process to get the answer. So the get the energy and take the second derivative of the energy that is going to be the same, okay? I like that energy and temperature and multiplicity and entropy were kind of very important concepts. What else? Other concepts? No? I think for me, I mean, I don't know something along these lines, but in that same problem set, problem set 30, question one, uh, where there was like four subsections to it, where. Um, yep. Uh, I, I think that was uh, one that sort of helped me understand a little more what I was doing. So I think maybe that would be a good one. Yeah, I like that problem too. Um, as you can probably tell, <laughs> but you, you know, I like you do it manually. Well, I, I do it manually and that really, uh, gives me the connection, right? It's like, oh, you know, this is not a bunch of differential equations and areas. You can just do it with a calculator if you have the multiplicity. Uh, yeah, something of course, simpler than that, simpler than that system. Mm hmm So in this one, you had to get mm, the probability and another probability. OK. Yeah, so these are kind of like uh, distinguishable um, particles. What about Okay, so let's make a combination of problems one and two. So this is what I suggest. So problem set three, problems one and two. So I'm going to give you a multiplicity function. Uh, G. I don't know, it might be the same as that one or uh, a variation. So this one is a function of the number of particles and the energy. So given uh, this multiplicity of two systems, get the combined multiplicity. Okay, and we had a, I guess we did that in class. Um, let me check. So if you look at slide number, uh, sorry, not slide, um, page number 30 of my notes, you're going to see that example. So something along that lines, uh, along those lines, and what happens when you have the two multiplicities and you combine them. And then I might ask you a question from problem one, which is like, oh, what is the probability that this particular case happens? Okay, so check uh, page 30 of my notes. 
I hope this is should be big enough, right? Page 30. All right. Mm, so this is essentially the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, last problem. Something from either homework uh, one or four. What about What about um, problem set four? Problem one, uh, sorry, problem two. So it is the one with, um, is, is the free energy of a harmonic oscillator. So, you know, you have to find the free energy and then from that you get the the entropy. So I'm going to simplify it also. Uh, given an, an equation of free energy, uh, which is a function of, uh, well, I guess u potentially tau potentially sigma. Um, find uh, entropy sigma. And I guess since we're here, also find uh, pressure. Okay. So you're, you will not have to find the free energy. So I, I think for, for problem two, you have to get the, um, the partition function, you know, calculate it from scratch. And then from that, you get the free energy. But uh, in the, on, for the test, I am going to give you the free energy. It's going to be a very simple function. And you know that you just have to differentiate uh, with respect to the temperature uh, and with respect to, which one was this one? Uh, the volume to get um, to get entropy and, and pressure. Okay, so this is going to be just a differentiation, and I think that's a pretty good exam. What do you think? Suggestions, changes, is good? Awesome. So you know what's gonna be on the test. I'm going to take a screenshot. Let me just get out of the way. Um, oh yeah. I think that was the screenshot. Good. Okay, um, next thing that we have to do. Um, can I have some volunteers for leading uh, study groups? So if you lead a study group, that's five participation points. And if you attend a study group, that's two participation points. And let me check the syllabus. The maximum Oh, this is not the one I want. Right. Maximum number of participation points is 12. Okay, so you can host two study sessions for this exam and attend another study session and then you have your 12 points. And 
you know, please uh, consider that homework is 14 points. The literature discussions is also 14 points. So 12 participation points is quite a lot. So who can host a, a few groups? Well, I mean, a few people who can host a group? I'll volunteer to host one. Um, that's not to say that I think I'm the best at this stuff, but I'll at least um, just sort of be the host and guide the conversation. Yes, that's that's what uh, that's what we want. What is your name? Uh, Ian. Ian? You don't sound like Ian. <laughs> Okay. Um, do you have a preferred time and day? Um, so the exam is, I'm gonna make the exam today. So it's gonna be posted, you know, by, definitely by nighttime. And it's gonna be due on Sunday. So anytime between now and Sunday is good. How does Tuesday sound at 5.30? Okay. And, it has um, some perks to host and to attend these sessions. So I'm going to send the exam from last year to, uh, to the host so that they can share it with, uh, with the people who attend. You know, the exams are not gonna be the same, but the style is going to be the same. And you know, some of the problems might be similar, I don't know. Um, a few more volunteers? Was that? Is that a yes? Okay, maybe not. Ian, suggest someone. Uh, I'll host I can. Oh, go, go ahead. My name is Athens. Um, the reason I want to host one is because I can't attend the one on Tuesday at 5 30 because I have Just class. like the city? Two minutes. Okay. Yeah, sorry, that's weird. No, I've seen I've seen your name, and uh, I I just remember that it it was not the same spelling. <laughs> okay. Okay, and what is the what time? Um, maybe what about Thursday at ten a.m. Perfect. And there was someone else. I can host one Friday. Uh huh. Who's this? That's fine. Uh, it's Brandon. Okay. Um, and then I don't know if anybody is not available during those times uh, at 10 a.m. or 5.30 p.m. Um, but I can pretty much host any time Friday. Um, so probably 12. Yeah, sounds pretty good. It's what I was thinking. So, you know, it still gives people some time to study, you know, the, the, during the study group and then maybe take the exam on Friday or something, right? When everything is fresh. All right, awesome. So if anyone else wants to host a study session, um, send me a message, but I'm going to uh, go with these ones right now. All right, great. So, Next week, I guess next um, Monday. Hmm. Actually, probably on Wednesday next week, um, you'll have uh, your graded exams, and we can discuss uh, if you want to make any adjustments to the course. You know, having gone through the first third or so. So, I hope um, you're liking it so far. But we can make changes. Okay, awesome. So let's continue. Let's finish chapter three today. I have a quick question yes. about uh, study groups. Yes. So when you say um, like participation, how, how do you know that we participated? Do we? Well, do it's, we it's something? Um, so I assume maybe this is not a, completely reasonable assumption. 
But I assume that you're going to use Teams. You know, if you use something else, if you use Zoom, for example, um, take a screenshot. So the host, you know, should take a screenshot to see who is there. Uh, if you use Teams, then your participation is recorded um, automatically. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any more questions? If not, let's move on. Okay. So last time we derived the energy of a one particle ideal gas. And we're really excited. I have a quick question. Yes. Are you going to be recording the session or is it recorded already? It is being recorded. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. So I guess the last thing that we were left to discuss was the this quantum concentration, which is equal to uh, what is it? Mm, yeah, it's two pi. Make sure that that is correct. It's M, so the mass of the particle, tau, divided by two pi h bar to the three halves. So this has units of uh, one over volume, so quantum concentration. It's, well, it is a concentration, but it has the h bar in here. And if any quantity has the H bar, that means that it is a quantum uh, quantity, All right? So, um, so NQ, quantum concentration, is gonna be one over LQ. And just like we had the side, of the box to be L. This is another length that we're calling LQ, and we're going to see what it is. So if we, mm, oh, this is Q because it's a, it's a volume. So this implies that LQ cubed is 2 pi h bar divided by m tau to the three halves and then, sorry, to the, um, yeah, to the three halves. So we can move this one over here and we end up with just LQ equals this, the square root of these. So the de Broglier uh, wavelength, the definition is h bar over, mm, I have to be careful with this p, it's just the momentum. It's not the pressure, okay, momentum. So that's equal to two pi h bar So uh, h bar is h divided by two pi. And this is the mass times some velocity of the particle. So let's see, I'm gonna continue up here. Uh, LQ squared it's gonna be equal to, so this is a length, right? The, the de Broglie wavelength is also a length. So we can make it squared so that um, we can get rid of this one. And this is gonna be equal to what well, this implies. 
we have the two pi h bar over m tau. And the other side, we have two pi squared uh, h bar squared divided by m squared and v squared. Mm. I'm missing something here. Oh yeah, this one is squared. So this one is squared. Okay, so now I can cancel them out. So what we get from here is that uh, mv squared, so this m goes away with this one, this one with this one, this one with this one. Uh, this one, we can move it over here. And the tau, we can move it over here. The two, we can move it over here. So this is pi tau. OK, so what this is telling you is that the temperature is related to the kinetic energy. That the particle is, the temperature is the kinetic energy. Um, well, over two. So the quantum concentration is essentially the volume of um, the cube. Mm, how shall I say this? If you have a particle, the particle has its wavelength. Uh, the wavelength is, go is going to depend on the, on the temperature and uh, on the kinetic energy. So if it's moving really, really slow, what happens to the wavelength? Prediction? If the, you can think about it with this relationship. Um, Delta x delta v, right? It has to be greater than, I think it's h bar over two. So if the velocity is really tiny, then the wavelength is really long. So the temperature is tiny, the wavelength is very long. If the velocity is high, then the wavelength is smaller and smaller. So, the wavelength is the size of the box, the length of the box. So essentially this is a, an imaginary box that is traveling with every particle, right? And what it tells you is that, um, you know, the assumption that we made when we derived the, the energy was that, where did I put it? I don't know where I put it, but we assume that the quantum concentration was much smaller than the regular concentration. So this condition implies that the particles are non-interacting um, at the quantum mechanics level. And this is true for everything in the in the classical limit. So the particles like in the atmosphere right now, the, the particles that you are um, breathing, breathing in, they are 
their their uh, deep Broglie wavelength is so tiny compared to the number of particles that it has around it that they don't interact at the quantum level. You'll have to go like really close to absolute zero for them to interact. So that's why we got uh, the result for the for the energy, the classical result, because this is the classical regime. Okay. So we know, or we have an idea of what the quantum concentration is. So now let's continue with this ideal gas. We have a, a different situation now. So instead of having one particle in a box, we have many boxes with one particle in each of them. This is figure well, one, two, three, n. This is figure uh, 3.7 in Kittel and Cromer. And so we want to know what is the partition function, not of one particle in a in one box, as we saw before, but of n boxes with one particle in each of them. So we are just going to be each one is going to have its own. Uh, partition function. If they are the same temperature, actually the partition function is the same. So the number of states we have to multiply them. So it's going to be um, Right, so it's the partition function of box one, box two, box three, box n, uh, but each one of them has the partition function z1, which is the partition function of the one uh, particle in the box. Okay, so um, this product over here includes every independent state. So let's draw the states. Mm. Okay. So this is gonna be E alpha of one. This is E beta of two. Then you have everything else, and then you have uh, E uh, zeta. Mm, looks a little ugly, but it's a zeta. Ah, looks worse. Okay, there it is, uh, of n. So I'm going to draw it over here too. Okay, so we might have the alpha, beta, zeta, so all the, the Greek letters here represent um, the orbital in which this uh, particle in a box is. And so remember that what we were calling orbitals are just the, the states. So like this is the lowest energy state. And then the next one might have, uh, it's gonna look like this. And then the next one, uh, it could look uh, 
like this, right? So the particles can be in in any state. And so if you consider all of them, then you have all the possibilities over here. So you multiply all the states of this one times all the states of this one times that uh, for the partition function. For the energy, you add the energies. So it's a lot of stuff in there. This is um, equation uh, 3.67. This one over here. Well, th this whole thing. OK. So let's keep this one over here. But let's consider a different situation. So in this other situation, we have uh, one box. And we have n particles in the box. One box uh, with n particles. n is greater than one, maybe much greater than one. The particles are distinguishable. And they are non interacting. Distinguishable and non interacting. Have you heard this word before, distinguishable, in any of your physics classes? Okay, anyone else? Okay. So this is one of the most important aspects of the physical universe. Uh, well, actually when they are non-distinguishable, this is the distinguishable case. So in the distinguishable case, uh, Kittel, and Cromer, they mentioned that the the atoms in um, in the box, which look kind of like this, so each one of these is a it's a different um, particle. They say, oh, they might be different isotopes or they might be different species, like you have helium and hydrogen or things like that. Um, that would, they have something that allow you to distinguish between particles. Um, Non-interacting means that you know, they, don't, they don't really, uh, they, they might collide, but once they collide, they, their wave functions do not mix. So, if you had only electrons, for example, in this, in this box, electrons are not distinguishable. And that changes properties a lot, um, as we will see in a little bit. So distinguishable means that we know which particle we're looking at. And so in this situation, you only have one box, but you know the particles it could be like that. They're not interacting, so they can be in the same. Uh, well, there, there's going to be many states, so it's very unlikely that they're going to be in the same one. So you can have all of them in the same box. But the equation, this equation is the same. Also the equation for the partition function. Okay, so if you look at that partition function, well, it's just going to be z1 to the n, the number of boxes with one particle, or the number 
of particles in your box. Okay, so this is like figure uh, 3.8, Tell and Cromer. Okay, so let's keep that in, let's put it in the back burner. So the partition function of n is going to be the partition function of one particle to the n, which is equal to the quantum um, <laughs> how it's called. How is this n called? I hate when I forget words. Mm. Concentration, of course, to the n. So regular concentration, quantum concentration. And this is the, the partition function that we derived uh, yesterday. And not yesterday, last class. OK, so you. Is equal to tau squared derivative with respect to tau of the natural log of the partition function. So if we want to get the energy, ex uh, expectation value of the energy of a system of n particles, then we just uh, perform these operations. So this is going to be equal to tau squared derivative with respect to tau. And then um, this is z to the n, and it's inside of the log. So we can take the n out of the log. And it's going to be that uh, this. OK, and we know that this is the quantum concentration divided by the concentration. And we also know that the concentration is 1 over the volume. So it's the volume. OK. So. This is going to be tau squared derivative with respect to tau. This is going to be 3 halves of n, uh, 3 halves of n. Mm, natural log of m tau divided by 2 pi h bar. And plus three halves n natural log of b. All right, so three halves uh, comes from, oh, sorry, this is not three halves. Three halves comes from the quantum concentration, which is this to the three halves, and it is inside of the natural log. So we can take the three halves out, and we have only these. And this part, we can forget about it because we're taking the derivative with respect to the temperature, and this has no temperature dependence. So we can remove it. And then just like we did last time that we separated and I said gamma equals m over 2 pi h bar. Then we can write this as gamma times tau. Tau is the temperature. And we're taking the derivative with respect to the temperature. So we want to keep that one in there. 
And this is inside the, the log multiplying. So we can take them out. Um, adding. And this has no temperature dependence. It's just mass and H bar. So we can remove it. And so we just have this nicer expression, which is the same thing that we got last time. So this ends up being um, three halves. I'm not going to do the rest, but it's just a derivative. 3n tau divided by 2. And so if you um, write kbt instead of tau, you get 3 halves of n kbt, which is good is the, the expectation value of the energy of a um, ideal gas of non-interacting distinguishable particles, which is the classical case. So this is Kittel and Cromer equation 3.69. Cool. So we got the energy. Um, well, we're going to continue using the partition function, but we know what it is. So now the free energy, we know that it is given by negative uh, tau, natural log of the partition function. And so if we want the free energy of the, um, this is the case with n particles, then this will be Zn, which is equal to um, Z1 to the n, which is equal to uh, minus tau n natural log of Z1. And of course, this is the quantum concentration divided by the concentration. Okay, so let's get the pressure. The pressure is the As I mentioned before, the derivative of the free energy with respect to the volume at constant temperature. So, you know, something like this is going to be on your exam, except that I'm gonna give you some function for F instead of this one. But you just have to take the, the derivative. Okay, so this is equal to, so it's derivative with respect to the volume you have a negative here and a negative here. So uh, they cancel out, you get a positive. So it's tau n natural log of same as before, n q times v. So one over n is v. So these are multiplying. Uh, inside the log, so we can take them out adding. Like that. So NQ is, you know, it has a, a mass, a tau, an H bar, but it has no volume. So the derivative with respect to volume is zero. 
so we can forget about it. And so we just get this natural log of the volume, which is nice. So um, I guess these two, we can take them out. So the pressure is tau n derivative with respect to the volume of the natural log of the volume. And this is just one over V. Okay. So if we move the V over here, we get PV equals N tau. And if you want to put it in regular temperature, we get that PV equals N KB T. Have you seen this before? Yes? Yes. What is it? How is it called? This is the ideal gas law. Oh, my handwriting. It's not the best at an angle. Ideal gas law. And you probably saw it, I don't know, in high school, maybe middle school. Well, here you got a more rigorous derivation of it. You know, and uh, I, I told you, this is a promise I can make. I promise that you can get anything that you want, any thermodynamic variable that you want from the partition function. And it's what we're doing here with the ideal gas. So we derive the energy. Um, now we derive the, the pressure and the ideal gas law. Okay, so let's continue with the with the entropy. So we have the same thing here, but now we want the entropy and the entropy is the derivative of the free energy with respect to the temperature at constant volume. Okay, so this is gonna be negative and negative, it's a positive. It's gonna be the derivative with respect to tau I guess we can take the N out of the way. It's gonna be tau a natural log of NQ minus natural log uh, of N. So this is the same as uh, plus natural log of the volume. And this is at constant volume. So, mm, yep, this is gonna look, it's not that messy, but so this is sigma is N tau derivative with respect to tau natural log of NQ plus natural log of NQ, derivative of tau with respect to tau. So this is just the product rule for the first term, plus tau derivative with respect to tau of natural log of the volume, plus the natural log of the volume, derivative of tau with respect to tau. So this is the product rule for the second term. And the one that goes away over here is this one. So it's the derivative with respect to temperature of the volume. Um, we can forget about this term. 
So, mm, this is n tau derivative with respect to tau three halves. So the n q is something to the three halves. Uh, natural log of gamma tau, which is the trick that I've been using, plus the natural log of nq, and this is just one, uh, plus natural log of the volume, and this is just one. All right. Uh, constant volume. And so the entropy is going to be n natural log of nq v, which is this one and this one, we can put them back into the natural log multiplying, plus 3 halves of tau derivative with respect to tau of this thing. This one was natural log of gamma plus natural log of tau. And we know that gamma has no temperature component, so we can get rid of it. And this is just natural log of tau. Constant, whole thing at constant volume. Okay, so that is gonna be one over tau, the derivative with respect to tau of the natural log of tau. And so we can get rid of this one and this one. So we have the three halves. And if we let Uh, n, the concentration, now be the number of particles divided by the volume instead of one particle that we had before, then we can rewrite that as n natural log of nq n over n plus 3 halves of n. So in the end, we get, I'm gonna put it down here. N natural log of NQ divided by N plus three halves. Um, oops, plus the natural log of n. Okay, so take a look at equation uh, Kittel and Cromer uh, equation uh, 3.76. And tell me if it looks the same or no. Is it the same? Is anybody there? Uh, no, the equation, the equation is not the same. Why? Because that's a loaded question. <laughs> Why? What about this term? That's not there. Huh. 
wonder why. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this one over here. So I have talked before about um, uh, extensive and intensive quantities, right? So if a quantity is extensive, then it increases with, with the size of the system with the number of particles. So for example, the energy was um, three halves of n tau, right? So the average energy per particle is three halves of tau. Tau is an intensive quantity. That means that it doesn't depend on the size of the system. Uh, and if you divide an extensive quantity by an extensive quantity, you get an intensive quantity. And so the average energy per particle is a constant. So this one works. Uh, if you look at the the ideal gas law, uh, the volume is an extensive quantity. So if we divide volume by the number of particles and move the pressure to the other side, get that the average volume per particle is the temperature divided by the pressure. Temperature is an intensive quantity. Pressure is also an intensive quantity. It doesn't depend on the size of the system. So that gives you an intensive quantity here. So if you divide it by N, you get intensive. Good. But this one, um, if you divide by N, Then you get natural log of n q over n plus three halves plus natural log of n. So this is an in, uh, intensive quantity. This also is just a number. Doesn't depend on the size, but this one depends on the size. Okay. Thermodynamics doesn't allow you to do this. So one of our assumptions, more and more, but I know that it, it was one in particular, one of our assumptions when we were deriving uh, all of these quantities, they work you know, for the energy, for the volume, not for the entropy. And the issue is that we assume that the particles were distinguishable. And we could say, oh, you know, there's a hydrogen there and there's another hydrogen over there. Uh, but in reality, particles are not distinguishable. They are indistinguishable. And that's actually uh, pretty important. It gives rise to things like the fact that matter has volume, that you can touch things, it's because particles are indistinguishable, electrons are indistinguishable. Um, so everything that you know, you, we'll see indistinguishability in more detail later in the course, uh, but you will also see it in your quantum mechanics classes. And so what is important to remember here is that even though these equations do not tell you why they have to be undistinguishable or how they are undistinguishable. They tell you that they have to be undistinguishable. Otherwise, the, uh, the thermodynamic is, is, is wrong, okay? So that's really cool. Um, so we had two different states. Well, we were considering different states. It's more than two. Let's say maybe three. So I think we had one that looked like that. And then we had 
another color because they're um, indistinguishable. And then maybe we had this one over here. Okay, so uh, if these are distinguishable, then you use permutations, right? The order matters. And so let's say that, you know, O is the number of orbitals. So number of states that are available. And you're going to select out of those, uh, sorry, O factorial, out of those O orbitals, um, you're going to select N particles. So this gives you the number of um, arrangements. But in reality, in reality, there's only one. Uh, this, this three belong to, remember that they are in the same box. So actually I should have through it like this. In reality, they look like this. Right, so the particles, you cannot distinguish between them. And so if this one moves here, or if this one moves here, it doesn't matter, it's exactly the same, the same state. So for distinguishable, we use permutations. For indistinguishable, we use uh, combinations. And this is going to be then O factorial divided by N factorial, O minus N factorial. Okay. So the difference between distinguishable and undistinguishable is the N factorial. You divide by N factorial. So the partition function, the real partition function for, well, I guess a partition function for indistinguishable particles, which is what occurs in reality, is not z1 to the n, is z1 to the n divided by n factorial. So, I had a derivation of the energy and the pressure, just like we did before, um, but including the n factorial. And you can see that you get exactly the same. So, you know, for the energy and the pressure, it doesn't matter if they are distinguishable or not. But for the entropy, uh, it does matter. So you know, look at my notes for, for the energy and the pressure. So for the entropy, this is gonna be, you know, again, negative um, derivative of the free energy with respect to tau. So this is the derivative. Uh, you had minus and another minus over here because the free energy is minus tau natural log of the partition function. So it's going to be a positive and it's going to be derivative with respect to tau of tau n natural log of z1 minus uh, tau n. Uh, tau n natural log of n factorial. So this one was dividing, now it's subtracting and you have the same terms. So this is an additional term. 
So remember uh, the Sterling approximation, natural log of n factorial is equal to n um, natural log of n minus n. So we can put that one in there and it's gonna look like N natural log of the quantum concentration divided by N plus three halves plus the natural log of N, which is what we had before with only this term. And so what the second term gives you is uh, minus N natural log of n minus n. So you have a natural log of n here times n minus natural log of n here times n. So those go away. Um, yep. And this is gonna be just equal to uh, one. So it's N. Uh, we had the negative. So this, is be this becomes positive one. And so we can add the positive one here. It's gonna be five halves. Okay, so now, this one should be equal to 3.76. Is that correct? Yes. Awesome. So sigma divided by n now is just a natural log of nq over n. This is an intensive quantity plus five halves, that's also intensive, it's just a number. And this complies with the, with the rules of thermodynamics. So this guy over here is called the uh, uh, sucker. Mm, with a C. Uh, tetrode equation. Okay, the last thing that you have to realize is that NQ includes uh, H bar. So entropy, even in the classical limit in which NQ is much smaller than N, even in the classical limits, limit, it has the H bar. So entropy, is inherently a quantum quantity. You cannot count states if you don't have the H bar because then it will be all continuous. So So yeah, I guess that's uh, that's it. All right, so let's stop over here. Um, I will post the exam today, uh, as I mentioned, by nighttime. I'm going to make the problems myself, so do not uh, bother, you know, trying to find the to find them in uh, on the internet. Um, it's best to just study. Uh, you can take it at any time, but there's going to be a two hour limit and there is an honor code. Okay, so uh, you will have to sign this as part of your exam. You're not allowed to talk about the exam until next Monday, okay? Are you, are you guys okay with the honor code? Yes, it's perfectly fine. Oh, it's perfectly fine.
Okay. Um, you guys are going to study really hard, so you know, don't 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 give away all the the little secrets <laughs> of the exam to others. Um, I am going to send an announcement with the times and the and the people who are hosting the study groups. And I guess we're all set. All right. I have a quick question. Yep. Uh, I don't know if it was, uh, you didn't answer it or something because I came late. Or um, how would you end up submitting like, the exam? Are we going to take pictures of our work and then upload them? Or Yes. So when you, so, so the exam is going to be available on Blackboard. When you download it, I get a timestamp. So I know at what time you downloaded it. So after the timestamp, you have two hours to solve the exam. And I guess I should give you guys maybe like two hours and 15 minutes. So to solve the exam, um, scan it or take pictures and upload it just like a homework. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's, it's time limited. That's the, that's the thing. Yeah. All right, any more questions? And if not, let's start the day. Thank you. Okay, thank you.